Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss the design of elevator system. If you haven't seen my previous video on designing parking lot system, then you should check the video. You can find the video here. You can either watch it first or watch it after this video. There are many things that I have already discussed in my previous video and I'm not going to discuss here. However, just to recall, there are few points that are discussed in greater detail in that video and I'm going to discuss those very briefly here. So you need to understand that elevator system design is also an object oriented system design uh, interview question just like parking lot system design. The very first thing is when the interviewer asks you this question, he is looking for your requirement collection expertise. He is looking for whether you can clearly list all the possible requirements and also can you scope down the, the system into something which you can solve in 30 to 45 minutes. Another thing that the interviewer is looking for is your design skills, especially your object oriented design skills. He is looking for how well you can design the system in terms of components and classes. How well versed are you in object oriented design concepts like abstraction, uh, encapsulation, in inheritance and polymorphism. The interviewer is also looking for whether you can, you can identify different object oriented design patterns or other programming patterns while designing the elevator system. In case there are two or more elevators in the system, the interviewer is looking for how well you can tackle the concurrency in your system. Again, as I have mentioned in my previous video on designing parking lot system, this type of question is not a distributed system design question. And so you should not try to solve it as a distributed system design question. If you try to do that, then the interviewer can interpret it as that you don't have sufficient experience to scope down the problem correctly. And he would think that instead of simplifying the problem, you are actually overcomplicating it. In my opinion, this is one of the best interviews to gauge the candidate's grasp of the fundamentals of the computer science. In addition, this can be extended into many different directions, making it an ideal problem to see how the candidate thinks. It is easy to make it an object oriented design problem. It can be used to discuss different data structures that can be used in implementing the system. If needed, it can be made even more complicated by introducing two or more elevator cars in the building where a request button summons the most appropriate elevator. This is another nice optimization problem. But the core single elevator problem is often good enough to judge the ability of a candidate to see different trade-offs inherent in any design. Now let's discuss different requirements of the system. So the very first requirement is that if you haven't saw my course, then please do check my course on system design interview preparation. The link is in the description below. At least go to the website, register there and go through the free preview chapters and see whether you like them or not. Okay, joke apart. The very first requirement is that the elevator car have three states, whether it can go up, down or idle. So there are three states. It can go up, it can go down or it could be idle. We will represent these states of an elevator car using enumeration. So now I have a question for you. In my past video in designing parking lot system, I said not to use enumeration for designing parking lot type. However, here I'm saying that we can use enumeration for these. You can pause the video and think about it, why I'm preferring enumeration types here and why I'm not preferring enumeration type in my previous video on designing parking lot system. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. And don't worry if you cannot guess right now, I'm going to discuss this in this video later. The second requirement is the elevator can transfer passengers from one floor to another. Transfer passengers from one floor to another. The third requirement is the elevator can only open its door when it is idle. <coughs> so open door when idle at a floor. Now let's discuss the number of floors that a building can have. The tallest building in the world is Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It has more than 160 floors and more than 57 elevator cars. So right now we can simply assume that in our system we have 200 elevator floors. So 200 elevator floors 
so since Burj Khalifa has 57 elevator cars, I'm assuming that okay, right now we have 50 elevator cars. 50 elevator cars. Now there are some requirements related to specification of each elevator car. Specs of elevator car. And for example, the number of passengers number of passengers that an elevator car can t can actually carry or the maximum load maximum load that the elevator car can carry similarly the maximum speed with which the elevator car can move so the maximum speed with which the elevator car can move up or down now the next requirement is what is we would like to minimize in this whole system do we want to minimize the overall wait time of a passenger so minimize wait time or do we want to minimize the wait time of individual passenger wait time of system or wait time of individual passenger the other things that we would like to actually discuss in the requirement would be like what about the throughput do we want to increase the throughput like the number of passengers using the elevators to go from one floor to another do we want to increase it so Put. Another requirement could be that do we would like to minimize the power usage by the, the whole elevator system. So power usage minimization for the whole elevator system. The reason is that as the elevators are moving up and down, they are using electricity and they are, use, they are consuming power, which means there is some cost associated with every movement of an elevator car. And then it also requires maintenance now. The more the elevator car is moving, it means there will be more uh, maintenance it will be requiring periodically. So that's the question. Do we would like to minimize power usage and in this way they minimize the cost? During requirement collection, you should also discuss with the interviewer whether he would like to have different operational zones or sectors while designing the elevator system. A zone is a set of flows which is covered by a set of elevator cars. For example, in our system, we are, we are assuming that there are 200 flows. We can actually divide those 200 flows into, let's say, four or five different operational zones. If we divide them into four operational zones, then we can say, okay, the first 50 flows are one operational zone or sector. The next 50 flows are the second operational zone or sector and, and, and so on and so on. And so we can say that only from our 50 elevators or 100 elevators that we have let's say 25 elevators will only serve the first 50 floors the next 25 elevator cars will only serve the next 50 floors and so on another example is suppose in this system we have one two three four five six floors and we have two elevator cars either we can consider this as a complete one operational zone where these two elevator cars serve all these uh, floors or we can also divide this into two different operational zones and we could say that okay this elevator car will only serve the first three uh, flows while the other elevator car will only serve the, the top three flows another way of zoning is that we can say that this first elevator car will only serve the even number of flows and this elevator car will only serve the odd number of flows. So why do we need zoning? Sometimes if the number of flows and the number of elevator cars are large enough, then it's very hard to actually come up with an efficient algorithm that could actually serve all our requirements. That is, it can increase the throughput of passengers using the elevator and minimize the cost and minimize the waiting time, overall waiting time of the system. I think everyone knows about this divide and conquer strategy. So in that case, when the problem becomes uh, that complex, it's better to actually divide it into smaller problems. 
and that's what we do by dividing the elevator system into multiple operational zones because now those operational zones can be, can be considered as independent elevator systems and their operation will be totally independent from the operation of other operational zones in that elevator system. Now the question is how should we decide what are the different types of operational zones should we use? Should we divide this whole elevator system into operational zones like first three and the top three or even or odd etc etc it all depends on our requirements whatever the requirements we discuss with the interviewer or whatever the requirements we have for designing the system dictates how we are going to divide the elevator system into multiple operational zones apart from these requirements there are some extended requirements as well for example triggering emergency alarm or brakes so emergency alarms brakes etc apart from the normal elevator cars there could be some vip or utility elevators as well in the system so vip uh, or utility elevator cars in the system apart from that there could be a monitoring system as well so the monitoring system which is monitoring the status of the elevator cars and the doors the button panels etc and there can be other extended requirement as well let me know in the comments below if i have missed any requirement that you think is important to discuss here now let's discuss different objects and actors in our system so that we can come up with the different classes and objects in our for, the, for our elevator system design so the first actor is passenger so passenger is some person who actually would like to go from one floor to another floor. The second object is elevator car. So like these are the elevator cars. Then of course we have floors. So we have different floors now in a building. We also have doors. So elevator doors. We also have button panels. button panels and there are actually two types of button panels there are button panels which are outside the elevator on each floor where you have two buttons up and down so there are two buttons only one for going up and other for going down so these are the button panels in each floor and then we have other button panels within the elevator which uh, contains a list of all the floors which you can press to actually tell the elevator system about your destination floor now as far as these button panels are concerned each floor will have these but as far as the topmost uh, floor is concerned it will only have the only have one button which is the which is the direction downwards similarly the lowest floor or the lobby in our case for example will have only one button which is going up uh, apart from that in our system we have the scheduler or dispatch system so i would say dispatcher this component is responsible for selecting the the most appropriate elevator to send to a passenger when a passenger calls an elevator car then of course we have the whole elevator system this is one big object and this will be a singleton object in our system apart from that we could also have monitoring system or a monitoring object and there can be other objects in the elevator system like alarms and other like mechanical objects as well that are responsible for moving the elevator cars up or down now before we go further i have a question for you do you think we need a passenger class while implementing the elevator system pause the video here and think about it the correct answer is we do not need a passenger class in the implementation of the elevator system a passenger is an actor in our system which calls an elevator car and rides it to go from one floor to another but in the implementation of the elevator system we really don't need the passenger class itself and please note we are not designing an elevator simulation system we are designing an elevator control system right now maybe a passenger class might be needed in the 
implementation of elevator simulation system where we would like to simulate passengers but in actual elevator system we don't need a passenger class and that is the same reasoning why we don't need a vehicle class in the design of parking lot system in my previous video uh, many of you guys asked that why we are not uh, using a vehicle class in our implementation and the answer is it's the same reasoning that the reason why we are not using a passenger class here in the design of elevator system it's the same reason why we are not using the vehicle class in the design of parking lot system now after discussing different objects and actors in our system we will now discuss the different use cases this is mostly important for tpm or product manager interviews for SDE interviews, the interviewer can ask the candidate to discuss them briefly because they can be used to actually discuss the different implementation of those use cases. So let me give you some examples of different use cases in the elevator system design. The first use case is calling the elevator. So of course, what it means that when a passenger wants to go from one floor to another floor, he will press a button, which will actually go to the scheduler or the dispatcher system. The dispatcher system will then figure out which elevator car is the most appropriate car that it should schedule to send to, the, to that floor. So this is what the calling the elevator use case is. Then the second use case is move or stop the elevator. So move or stop elevator. So an elevator can move up or move down or it can stop if it is moving the third use case is open or close the doors so open or close elevator doors the fourth use case is indicating the elevator direction so when an elevator is going up or down usually we show this direction inside the elevator as well as we also show it outside when elevator come on a floor we, we actually notify the the passengers there who are waiting for the elevator that this elevator is going up or down the another use case is indicating the elevator position or the number of the floor so inside the elevator there is a panel where it shows the floor where the elevator is present right now and it actually indicates the passengers if they need to hop off from the elevator at that floor that okay this is your destination floor now Another use case is triggering emergency brakes. Similarly, we have another use case which is making emergency call. So emergency calls. And there can be other use cases as well. Let me know in the comments below if you, if you think there are other use cases as well which I have missed here. Now let's discuss different classes and interfaces in our system. So the very first example that I'm going to discuss right now is basically the button interface. It has pressed down and is pressed uh, methods. And there are two types of classes that actually implement that button interface. We have elevator buttons and we have hall buttons. So the hall buttons are the buttons which are outside the elevator at each floor, which, is, which has only two buttons up and down. And then the elevator buttons are basically the buttons which are inside the elevator and represent the number of flows. The question is why we need two different types of button class because their implementation is totally different. The press down of the hall button does totally different thing than what the press down of elevator button does. Similarly, we have a door class and it has open function, close function and is open to check whether the door is open or not. And we will have as many instances of this class as the number of flows times the number of elevators. Similarly, we can have an elevator motion interface, which has a move function, which takes a destination flow, and it could also have a stop function as well. Similarly, we will have interfaces and classes for the flows. In the system, we will have uh, interfaces for the dispatcher system as well, for the monitoring system as well and by the way for the monitoring system i actually discussed one interface in the design of the parking lot system so you should check that video as well and we can have other uh, interfaces i'm not going to discuss those classes and objects right now because the, there are other online resources which you can find which are actually filled with all those information and you can actually uh, you can go through them and also if you would like to know my opinion about the different classes and interfaces and their functions then let me know 
what classes and interfaces you can come up with in the comments below and I will then check them and I will let you know whether you are right or wrong or if, if you have missed anything or not. Now I would like to discuss the most important part here of the elevator system design which is the scheduling algorithm. As I said before, the elevator system design is a unique interview which can be tailored into discussing diff many different things. So it can be turned into an object oriented design question where the interviewer can ask you to come up with the design of different classes, and interface, etc. It can also be turned into an interview question where the interviewer will try to evaluate your problem solving skills. In that case, he might ask you to actually uh, come up with an appropriate algorithm that can be used to schedule the elevator cars. That's why you need to know at least these four algorithms that I'm going to discuss here. So the very first and the simplest algorithm to implement is first come, first serve. In this case, how we implement this first come, first serve request is that all these hall buttons, they are connected to the scheduler and whenever and, and, and whenever a passenger press a button, there is a request. That request goes to the dispatcher and the dispatcher store it in a queue. So all the requests will go in a queue. So let's say there was a passenger here on, let's say this, these are the floors, two, three, four, five, and he wants to go down. Okay. So that request will go in the queue here first. So at three, the action is down. There could be another passenger who is here and who wants to go up. So he pressed the button after this passenger. So that request will go again here and it will be one and up. Now let's just assume for the time being that we only have one elevator in the system. In that case, what will happen is that the elevator first will go here to this passenger. So what the dispatcher will do, it will take the first item and check and then it will actually call the elevator to move to this this floor and elevator will go there. The passenger will hop on to the elevator car and then it will go to his destination. And once the elevator become empty at that time, again, the scheduler will come here and take the next entry or the next uh, request from the, from the queue. So you can see in the first come first sub approach that as a passenger is requesting the elevator car, we are putting this request into a queue. And then we always process those requests in first come first serve manner. Now in that, in a, in a case where we don't have one elevator, but, but two elevators, what we would do in that case, the scheduler can, can actually uh, decide to always send the nearest elevator to the passenger in, in order to serve the passenger request. So now let's suppose if we have two elevator cars instead of one, in that case, what will happen that the dispatcher will always select the nearest elevator to go and take the passenger uh, which is requesting the elevator. For example, now in that case, first when the dispatcher will process this request, it will, it will then check between these two elevators, this elevator is near to this guy. So he will actually send this one here. And of course, then it will once after this, it will go and look at this entry and process this entry. And for that, this elevator will go to this uh, passenger. Also, there's one more thing that we need to understand when there are two or more elevators that the elevators could be in either four of these states. So the first state the elevator can be is it's idle. So the elevator is not moving, it's stopped at some floor. The second state the elevator can be is that the elevator can be moving in the same direction towards the passenger and also the same direction where the passenger wants to go. So moving same direction towards passenger and direction passenger wants to go. So for example, 
let just for example let's say this passenger wants to go down and this also moving down which is this case <coughs> the third state this uh, elevator car can be is that it is moving same direction it is moving in the direction towards the passenger but opposite to direction passenger wants to go example let's say this passenger wants to go up and this elevator now going down it's going towards the passenger but it's going in the opposite direction where the passenger wants to go and then the fourth state is the the elevator car is going away from the passenger going away from the passenger so let me repeat again very quickly there are four different states where we which in which we can find the elevator car the first state is the idle state where the elevator car is, is idle at stopped at a floor the second state is the elevator car is moving towards the passenger and the same direction where the passenger wants to go for example we take the example that this passenger wants to go down and the, this elevator also going down so it's going towards the passenger and also in the same direction where the passenger wants to go the third is the third state is that the elevator is going towards the passenger but in the opposite direction so the elevator is going down but this passenger wants to go up for example and then the fourth one is that the elevator car is going away from the passenger so for example this uh, this uh, passenger wants to go down and this elevator is going up so these are the four different states so we can clearly see the, that the dispatcher will actually ignore those elevators which are in these two states that is they are either moving away from the passenger or moving in a direction towards the passenger but away from the direction where the passenger wants to go so now the dispatcher will always try to find an elevator between these two states in order to serve the passenger request and so that it will check between these two types of elevator cars and see which elevator car is then nearest to the uh, passenger floor now clearly this algorithm has some flaws there is a possibility where some requests could have been served while some other requests were being served for example consider the case where we have a large number of floors and we have a large number of uh, basically a large number of elevators and now there is uh, one passenger who is going from the ground floor all the way up to fifth floor and there is another passenger here who is here at the third floor going towards fifth floor so in the first come first of manner what would happen is that this elevator first will go all the way up to five and it will first completely serve the first passenger and then it will go to the third one although ideally what it should have done is that it should have gone to this passenger also and pick it up as well so we can see clearly see there is a flaw in this uh, implement in this algorithm this algorithm also results in extra up and down motions of elevator just give you a simple example let's suppose we have only one elevator so this passenger comes wants to go up then this passenger comes wants to go maybe up as well but we will first the elevator car will first come here it will actually pick this passenger up go all the way up drop the passenger and then it will go and check the next request in the dispatcher queue and then serve it so it means there will be some extra up or down movements of the elevator car which we could have avoided but this algorithm does not tackle those uh, those things the second algorithm is shortest seek time first this algorithm tries to favor minimum movement of the elevator car as compared to the first one where we saw that there could be extra movement of elevator car this is an improvement over the first come first serve basis now there are two approaches to implement this one approach is using the priority queue
or min heap and in that case what you do you actually put the all the request entries in a priority queue or a min heap, min heap uh, based on the distance of the requesting flow from the elevator flow and then we pick the the topmost request to be served but of course this min heap will change as the position of the elevator changes this also changes so other approach is basically use like an array and that array would be basically like something like this equal to number of flows and so on and let's say if the elevator is here starting from that index it will start scanning in this array to see which flow uh, like which request is the minimum request so this algorithm also has some flaws for example there is a possibility of starvation like for example if there is one passenger which is here and then most of the passengers are at this point so what will happen now the elevator will just keep serving these passengers that are coming here and it will totally ignore the passenger which is a bit further away from the elevator car and also similar to first come first serve uh, approach this algorithm also does not support uh, serving multiple requests in parallel now the third algorithm is called scan and it is also popularly known as elevator algorithm as well now let's see how it is implemented in the scan algorithm there will be an array a boolean array there will be actually two boolean arrays one for the up direction one for the down direction and each elevator car it will be just scanning this whole building moving up and down so this elevator car will go all the way up and only at it at this point it will change its direction it will go down all the way down and then only at the bottom most uh, floor it will then change its direction and while each elevator car is moving at every floor they check the entry there so if this elevator car is moving up at every floor that it reaches it checks the corresponding entry here whether the entry is set or not and if it is set uh, it, is, it is true then the elevator car will stop there open the door and also reset this entry to false and also not apart from this the elevator each elevator car also has two priority queues min heap and max heap for going up and down and they also check the entries there as well whether the when, when it's going up it's checking the min heap and see and checking whether the the entry the floor entry there in the min heap at the top is the current uh, floor or not and if it's the current floor they stop there and they also take out the entry from the uh, from the priority queue from the min heap as well so this algorithm has clearly advantages over the above two algorithms because now it can actually serve multiple requests in parallel however it has its own flaws as well uh, the first flaw that it has is that the elevator cars are continuously moving which means there is an increased cost now associated with it and of course then we need to do all the maintenance and everything the second issue is that in this approach is that the elevator car will only change its direction when it reaches one end so let's suppose if this elevator car is going up it will keep going up until it reaches the end and then only then it will change its direction and this actually waste a lot of time as well and to overcome this we have the fourth algorithm that overcome this problem and that algorithm is called look why we why we call it look because in this algorithm the elevator actually look ahead to see at each floor it look ahead to see whether there are request there or not for example if this elevator is going up it will actually try to look ahead for other request in the up direction and if there are no request in the up direction it will just stop there and it will not move at all so the look algorithm is similar to the scan algorithm but on the only thing is that in the scan algorithm the elevators they are keep moving and they only change direction when they reach the top while here in the look algorithm the elevators will stop as soon as there is no more request in front of them 
and that is the point where they can change direction as well based on the request if the for example if this elevator was going up and it, at this point it drops the passengers and it look ahead and see there's no other request in the top floors then this elevator will stop here and then it will not move now it can only move based on the request when the weather request is coming from a passenger in some floor which is uh, down the floor where the elevator is or it's up the floor where the elevator is now in the look algorithm let's suppose this passenger it wants to actually go up and there are two elevators one of the elevators stopped here and the other ele elevator is going up in this direction now when the passenger press the elevator car request button now the dispatcher has to decide between these two elevators that which one it should actually dispatch to pick up the passenger and now there are different approaches that the algorithm can use the first approach is that algorithm can use always the shortest seek time first so in this in this approach the algorithm will actually suggest this elevator to go down and pick the pick the passenger although we know that there is another elevator which is going up in reality the algorithm used by the elevator systems is a combination of the look algorithm along with some modifications in it the modifications are based on heuristics which are applied in the algorithm the heuristics could include for example if it's an office building then of course in the morning we would like the elevators to always be present at the lobby so that they can take more passengers which are going towards their offices up or in the afternoon maybe for example a late evening since everyone wants to go down maybe then what we would do if we have let's say 10 floors and uh, three elevators maybe we can move those elevators automatically towards towards floors like three six and nine so that they are spread over the whole building in a way to actually cover most of the request when needed also one more final thing is that in the implementation of scan we use the arrays but in the implementation of look algorithm we can either use hash map or tree map or like a, even a binary search tree because it will be way easier to actually look ahead in that case like if an elevator is going up and it reaches this point in a binary search tree it will be way easier to see if there's any entry greater than three in the binary search tree or not so let me know in the comments below how will you implement these algorithms if you have to now in the beginning of the video i discuss that we can actually use enumeration to represent the different states of the elevator car while actually i discourage using the enumerations for the uh, for designing uh, during the design of the parking lot system we need to understand that i was not discouraging the use of enumeration actually i was using i was i was actually discouraging the use of enumeration for that scenario in case of the state of the elevator car we know there are only three states either the elevator is going down or going up or it's idle there is no fourth state possible and since we already know in advance all the different types of states that are possible that's why we can use enumeration there but in case of parking lot system at the beginning we didn't know which types of parking lot we would like to actually use in our parking lot the it could be extend like a we had a parking lot category or type of like a compact car and a large car but we can also always introduce different other types of parking lot and that is why we cannot use enumeration there because using enumeration will then violate the open closed principle that we have and what the open closed principle dictates the open closed principle dictates that whatever the code you are writing it should be able you should be able to extend it without modifying the existing code if you are using enumeration for the parking lot type and then you are introducing new parking lot types then in that case what will happen if you are using enumeration that you will actually violate this open you have to go and modify i think all the places where you have your uh, if else or switch case statements for the parking lot type you have to go and modify all that code which will violate the open closed principle of object oriented design now just for the sake of completion i would also like to discuss one more 
algorithm which is nowadays being used in in some very new buildings it is called a destination dispatch algorithm so it is destination dispatch and what it does actually is that in in some buildings what you will find that instead of these up and down buttons there will be a separate panel a screen there where the passenger can enter the destination floor and that panel will then calculate the appropriate elevator for it and it will tell you okay to which door number or elevator car number it should go to actually uh, go to his uh, to the destination floor so in that case the dispatch algorithm try to load the passengers going to a same destination floor in a same elevator in order to minimize uh, the the wait time and also in order to minimize the the moving time as well because now if all the passengers are going to the same floor and they will not be stopping in between then it will of course increase the throughput of the system so let me know in the comments below what do you think how the elevator system find the uh, most appropriate elevators in that case if they are using this destination dispatch algorithm a hint is maybe k nearing neighbors Please note, elevator system design discussed in this video is just one way to design the elevator system. However, for your case, the interviewer can to go in totally different direction, depending on what the interviewer is looking in the candidate. And so there could be totally different requirements that could be discussed in an interview. Also there could be different requirements for which the implementation would be totally different. For example. The requirement would be that you are actually designing a elevator system for a residential building. So the requirements there would be totally different from the requirements for an elevator system for the hotel or for an office building or from an airport building, etc. Also, as far as the dispatching algorithms are concerned, we use a strategy pattern for implementing these algorithms. So there could be multiple dispatch request strategy classes in the system. And when a system gets installed in a building, then a set of dispatch request strategy classes can be chosen depending on the scenarios and certain criteria like the time of day or the day of week etc. So I'm going to stop the video here. Please let me know in the comments below uh, do you find this video useful or not and also please like the video as well. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon. And by the way again, if you haven't checked my course on system design interview preparation, then please do check the course. The link is in the description below. Thank you and take care.